In this video, we're going to focus on solvolysis reactions. What are solvolysis reactions? When you hear this word, what do you think of? If you focus on a prefix, solvo, think of the word solvent. And if you look at the suffix lysis, lysis means to split apart. So when we combine these two things together, what does this mean? In a solvolysis reaction, we're reacting the alkyl halide with the solvent. The solvent could be methanol, it could be water, it could be ethanol, or something else. So in a solvolysis reaction, what you need to know is that the nucleophile is going to be the solvent. Now, what about the word lysis? What are we splitting apart? We're going to break apart the carbon bromine bond. So we're going to break this molecule into two parts, a carbocation and a bromide ion. So that's the lysis part that we're going to uh, break apart there, that bond. And we're going to use the solvent to do that. So hence, we have a solvolysis reaction using the solvent to split apart this bond. So the first step in this reaction, by the way, solvolysis reactions are typically associated with SM1 reactions. The leaving group is going to leave. So we're going to get a tertiary carbocation. Now, once we get this carbocation, here's the bromide ion somewhere in the solution. The solvent is going to behave as a nucleophile. It's going to react with the carbocation. And so we're going to get this intermediate. Whenever oxygen has a positive charge, any hydrogen atoms attached to it will be very acidic. So now in the third step, a methanol molecule is going to grab the proton. And our end result is an ether. So that's an example of a solvolysis reaction. That's where the solvent behaves as the nucleophile in this reaction. Let's look at another example. Try this one. So let's say we have 2-chlorobutane and we're going to react it with water. Go ahead and predict the products of this reaction and write up the mechanism as well. By the way, while you're doing that, for those of you who are currently studying SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions. I do want to let you know that I have a practice test on that and you can actually download it as well. So you can check it out in the description section below. That is below this video. So now let's continue. The first step, the leaving group is going to leave. And we're going to get a secondary carbocation intermediate. Now, in the next step, water is going to react. In the previous example where we had terbutyl bromide, stereochemistry wasn't important because the tertiary carbon had three methyl groups and it wasn't a chiral carbon. But for this example, stereochemistry is important. Notice that the water can attack from the back or from the front. If it attacks the carbocation from the back, we're going to get the inverted product. If it goes from the front, we're going to get the retention product. Now the chloride ion is going to be closer to the front side than the back side. So the water, as it approaches the carbocation from the front, is going to be repelled by the chloride ion. So we're going to get less of the retention product and more of the inversion, the inverted product. So we're going to get a racemic mixture, but it's going to be unequal. This is known as the intimate ion pair. And because of that, we get less of the retention product, more of the inverted product. Sometimes it could be 60-40, sometimes it could be 70-30. We just get slightly more of the inverted product.
But right now, let's focus on the mechanism. And then we'll add the stereochemistry to it. So in the end, we're going to have a hydroxyl group in the front and in the back. Now in the third step, water is going to remove a proton and we're going to get a hydroxyl group here. But we get two different products. If water approaches from the front, we're going to get the retention product where we retain the configuration at the chiral center. If it approaches from the back, we're going to get the inverted product. So it's not going to be on the the wedge is going to be on the dash. So this is the retention product, this is the inverted product. So we get a racemic mixture. So make sure you're aware of that. For an SM1 reaction, you're always going to get a racemic mixture if this particular carbon, where the leaving group was, or where you add the nucleophile, if it's chiral. Now, let's try another example. So here we have an alkyl bromide, and this time we're going to react it with ammonia. Ammonia is a weak base, so we can get the SM1 and the E1 product, but we're going to focus on the S1 reaction because the title of this video is Sovolysis Reactions. So what's going to happen here? We know the leaving group is going to leave if we focus on the SM1 mechanism. When that happens, we're going to get a plus charge on the secondary carbon. But notice that this secondary carbocation is next to a tertiary carbon. And so we're going to get a rearrangement, particularly a hydride shift. So as the hydrogen moves from the tertiary carbon to the secondary carbon, the plus charge will move on to the tertiary carbon because that carbon lost the bond. So now we have a more stable carbocation. Now, when we add NH3, do we have to worry about stereochemistry in this example? Notice that this carbon won't be chiral because the left side is the same as the right side. So we don't have to worry about stereochemistry in this example. In the next step, the solvent is going to behave as a nucleophile. And it's going to react with the carbocation. And now we have a nitrogen with four bonds. Whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it's going to have a plus charge. And then in the next step, we're going to use another ammonia molecule to remove the hydrogen. So the end result is we have an amine. Now this is a primary amine, even though it's attached to a tertiary carbon. It's a primary amine because the nitrogen is attached to one carbon atom. So that's it for that example. Let's try a similar problem. But this time, we're going to use a different solvent. Let's use ethanol, E-T-O-H for short. Go ahead and predict the major product for this reaction. Now this is going to be an SO1 reaction. We have a secondary alcohol halide and a protic solvent. So that favors SO1 over SO2. But anytime you have an SO1 reaction, you can get an E1 reaction. We'll just not focus on the E1 product 
in this video. So the first step, the leaving group is going to leave. And we're going to get a secondary carbocation. Now, like before, we could get a hydride shift, but notice that we have a five carbon ring. Whenever you have a five carbon ring, be mindful that a ring expansion could occur because if the ring could expand to a six carbon ring, that's going to create a more stable situation. And that's what's going to happen here. Let's call this carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So what's going to happen is the bond between two and six is going to break. Those two electrons are going to be used to connect carbons one and six. So we're going to get a six membered ring let's call this one two three four five six so we broke the bond between carbons two and six and we formed a bond between carbon one and six so these electrons they went here towards the carbocation so notice that carbon one gained a bond so it no longer has a plus charge. Carbon six lost the bond, but it gained it back. So it's the same. Carbon two lost the bond. It didn't get it back. So it's going to have the plus charge. Carbon one has the methyl group. So we're going to put that here. So right now, we have a secondary carbocation adjacent to a tertiary carbon. So we could do another shift. In this case, we could do a hydride shift. These carbocation rearrangements and ring expansions, they will continue as long as the molecule can adopt a more stable configuration. And that's the driving force behind these rearrangements. Molecules like to find the most stable arrangement possible. So this hydride is going to move towards the carbocation. And now we're going to have a tertiary carbocation intermediate with a six carbon ring. So this is the most stable carbocation that we could form out of what we have here. So now at this point, the nucleophile or the solvent is going to react with the carbocation. And we're going to get this. Now, on the last step of this solvolysis process, we're going to remove the proton from the hydrogen. And we're going to get our final answer. which is an ether. So that's it for this video. So now you know what a solvolysis reaction is. It's an SO1 reaction where the solvent behaves as a nucleophile. Now for those of you who are interested in downloading that practice test, here's how you can do it. So if you go to patreon.com slash math science tutor, it'll take you to my Patreon membership page. Now to really, to get this particular worksheet, you need the level four membership. This is where I have my worksheets for final exams and practice tests. Once you sign in, you'll see something that looks like this. And if you go to organic chemistry posts, you're going to get access to the extended versions of my organic chemistry videos. You've seen the free versions, which could be for a typical video like 20 minutes long. The full versions could be an hour or two hours long. Some are even like four hours long. But you could find the links to the, the direct link to the extended version of my YouTube videos in the description section of the referring video on YouTube.
So if you're taking um, your second exam, and if you're studying SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions, I recommend viewing this one. I think the free version is like 30 minutes long on YouTube, somewhere around there. The full version is an hour and a half long. This will give you a good overview of SN1, SN2 reactions. But here's the practice test that you can download. It has 77 test questions, and <laughs> I've put as many variations of problems that you might find on a typical exam for this topic in this particular document. Now this is the video that has all of these questions but has the answers as well. But for those of you who prefer to get a printout and maybe work on this while you're at school or something, you can check this out when you get a chance. So you need the level 4 membership to get this document but the level 3 membership to access this video. So feel free to take a look at that when you have a moment.